the last two weeks are today as well. Well, that's good language right there, isn't it? Hallelujah. Something that big churches have took out of their hymnals. Yeah. Amen. Many of the big time preachers say you don't need to talk about that anymore. Yeah. You need to talk about something more positive. Oh, I can't think of anything more positive than what we've been talking about lately. Amen. Yeah, Hallelujah. Play so it. they want you to take it out of your hymn books. They don't want you to sing, you know, what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. No, they don't want you to sing that right there. Amen. Yeah. They want you to sing, you know, things like we can have positive thoughts yeah. and everything go away and everything be good. Hallelujah, honey, it takes the blood plus nothing. Amen? Amen? And that's what we're talking about. Yes. We began this by looking over into the book of Genesis and all the way over in the third chapter we find God showing us a picture, a type, and a shadow of the Redeemer to come. Amen? Amen. Brother Bruce, we found man yeah. in a perfect state. God had put him in a perfect place right. and he still messed up. <clears throat> Amen? Amen? That lets you know even under the best circumstances, man yeah. is a failure without God. Amen? Yeah. Even under the best circumstances, man fails miserably right. without God. Amen? Oh, so they rebel against God's Word and they fall. Yeah. And what do they do? The first thing they do is what we try to do. We try to fix it. Yeah. They took and they sewed some fig leaves together and they covered up their nakedness. Tried to replace the covering that once was there, which was the glory and the righteousness of God. Come on. And God comes along and He finds them clothed in something that they made. And guess what? That ain't good enough. Right. So God performs the first animal sacrifices and coats them with skins of animals, yeah. showing us a picture of the blood of the Lamb that would come, amen, that would once again clothe us and cover us. My, my, mind, the righteousness of God. All right. And we find Adam and Eve having children, Cain and Abel. We went over, I think, the fourth chapter. Mm -hmm. We find these young men who had been trained and had been taught about sacrifice and the need for a blood sacrifice. We find Cain and Abel coming to the Lord with an, and making an altar. And yeah. Cain brings what? The work of his hands. Right. Offers it to God and it's rejected. Abel brings a blood sacrifice and God accepts it. Amen. And Cain gets angry because God has rejected what he offered. Right. And that's the way we are as men a lot of times. We get angry because we're not good enough. That's right. You mean the best I've got ain't good enough for you, God? You got it. You're beginning to think right now. Amen. Who was it? Was it King Solomon? And this is not an exact quote, paraphrase rather, but he said, man in his best state. Amen. Man in his best state is miserable. Right. The best that man has to offer is not good enough. Come on, say it. And we find God rejecting man's works. And He still rejects man's works today. Yeah. Amen. Come on. There is no way you can stand before God and proclaim yourself to be righteous because of what you have done. That's it, brother. doesn't work that way. Amen. I told you the last couple of weeks, now your works and your religion and the different things that you do to make you feel better about yourself, they might work okay whenever you fellowship with the brethren. Mm -hmm. You might be able to rub elbows with Brother Bruce, Brother Sleeves, Brother David, Brother Bill, Brother Mike, mm -hmm. who whatever, whatever brothers you hang with, and you might feel pretty good about yourself. Right. But it's when you stand in the presence of a holy God, a righteous God, an all-seeing, a justified God, yeah. That's whenever you realize, uh-oh, my rags ain't good enough. That's it. My works are not good enough. Amen. The only thing that's going to be good enough when you stand before His judgment seat right. is whether you are washed in the blood of the Lamb. Amen. 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 And all throughout history, all throughout the Old Testament, God shows us. He points us right. toward the Redeemer that is to come. Amen. Amen. He points us to that which Jesus Christ would fulfill in the New Testament. Amen. When we read the pages of how that He went to the old rugged cross, amen, amen, and laid down His life, He would fulfill that which He spoke to Adam and Eve about in the Garden of Eden. He would fulfill that which He showed to Cain and Abel. He would fulfill that what He was showing the people there with the ark. Whenever we talked about last week that Noah built the ark, there was only one way out of the coming judgment that God was pouring out on the land. There was one escape. He would fulfill that. That one escape would be made for man on the old rugged cross just outside of Jerusalem on a hill called Golgotha, the place of the skull. Amen. When, when the Son of God would hang suspended between heaven and earth and give His last drop of blood for you and 
for me and he would cry these words from the top of the cross. It is finished. It would be that which God had prophesied and showed throughout all of the history of man. This is it. This is the cataclysmic event that will once again make it possible for man to walk boldly into the throne room of God. It would not be by the blood of goats. It would not be by the blood of rams. It would not be by the blood of a spotless earthly lamb, but it would be God's lamb. The lamb that John stood on the sandy shores of the river Jordan and said, Behold the lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world. It would be through that blood that once again the fellowship that Adam broke would be repaired, would be fixed, would be made new right. by the blood that Jesus Christ would Amen. shed on the cross of Calvary. Amen. And we saw last week how that God looked down on the earth and the Bible says that the thoughts of man were on wickedness continually. Right. We see how that it grieved God that He even created man. We see how that God said, I'll wipe them off the face of the earth. Right. I'll do away with them, Brother, Brother Bruce. It makes me wonder today how God must feel when He looks down. Oh, I'm so thankful for His grace today. Amen. 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 How He must feel when He looks down and He sees the condoning of homosexuality. Amen. Whenever He sees babies, unborn babies being murdered by the millions. Amen. 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 And it being condoned by a judicial system that is more corrupt than sin itself. Amen. It makes me wonder today how God must feel when He looks down and He sees gay pride parades. And whenever He sees whoremongering and He sees Amen. adultery and fornication and he sees the wickedness and sin of man and the billion dollar industry of pornography and the violence in our schools and our kids packing guns to school and blowing the other kids heads off and opening fire in classrooms and killing people it makes me wonder how it must grieve the heart of God when he looks down on this sinful world today Come on, brother. it makes me wonder if he doesn't regret once more creating man amen, amen. you got it Oh, but we find in the next verse right after God says, I'll wipe them off the earth. Uh -huh. I'm done with them. But Noah found grace yeah. in the eyes of the Lord. Right. God would speak to Noah and He would tell him to build an ark. Yeah. He would give him specific instruction. Brother Bruce, He would tell him the wood to use. Right. He would tell him the material to use. Amen. He would give him the measurements. Right. Exactly how He wanted it done. That's it. That's what He's done with us right here today. This is our instruction manual. He has given us specific instructions on how to make it from earth to glory. Amen. He has given us everything that we need. And it's when man decides that it's not good enough or we must fix it or we must add to it or we must take away from it, that's when we get in trouble. How many people have ever went and bought, maybe you went and bought a bookshelf or maybe you bought something that had instructions in there? And it had all it had, you know, it always says easy assembly, but when you open it up, there's a million screws. Right. Amen. And you're thinking, easy assembly. <laughs> but you go from, by the directions, it says step one. Oh. Take part A and part B. Mm -hmm. And it shows you the screws. Take them and fasten that together. Yeah. How many people ever just didn't read the directions? Amen. Or maybe Brother Sleecy decided I'll just bypass that part. I don't <laughs> think that's really needful anyway. <laughs> and don't come out the way you want it to. Or maybe you got it together and you thought, uh-oh, that piece is backwards. Uh -huh. And you look on the instructions, sure enough, yeah, that's not how it's supposed to go. Well, how do you think today things would have turned out had Noah decided, well, you know, I'm not going to pitch this thing within and without. That's too much trouble. I'll just pitch it within. Come on. How do you think it would have been if he just said, go for wood? That stuff's hard to come by. Yes. I'm going to go get me some pine. That's a lot easier for me to get. Right. I told you last week it would have floated like a rock. Right. Same way with your salvation today. Amen. If you try to add to or take away the plan that God has laid out mm -hmm. all since the beginning of time, mm -hmm. the Lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world, mm -hmm. God would point man to one thing throughout all of His history. Right. Throughout all of the Old Testament, God would point toward that which would happen on a hill outside of, outside of Jerusalem. He would point toward the Messiah that would be born of a virgin. He would point toward the blood 
of God's spotless lamb that would be shed once and for all for everyone right. that would accept Him. Amen. Then after the cross, through the apostles and the disciples, and today through preachers who are still preaching the truth, we stand on this side of the cross pointing back to the cross. Yeah. In the Old Testament, Come on. they pointed toward that right. which was going to happen. Right. The biggest event in the history of man. Today I stand here in this pulpit pointing back at a hill called Golgotha to the greatest, the most cataclysmic, the biggest event that ever happened Amen. in the history of man. And that's whenever God Himself became flesh. Oh, and died for you and for me so that we wouldn't have to go to hell. You don't have to go to hell today. If you go to hell, it won't be God's doing. It'll be your doing. He's done everything but force you through the gates of heaven. He said, here it is. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. Come unto me, all ye that will. If you're thirsty, drink of the water of life. Drink of the water that I give you. And you'll never thirst again. He's done everything but force you in and he's not going to do that. If you go to hell, you'll choose to go to hell. If you go to heaven, you'll choose to go to heaven. Amen. So today, for a few minutes anyway, oh, I want us to look at what may be the most prolific picture and shadow of that which was to come. We're going to leave the book of Genesis today and we're going to go into the book of Exodus. All right. And we can spend some more time reviewing. But we're going to offer all these sermons on CD so if you miss some of what we've already went over, by all means, get the CDs. Had someone write us this week and they wanted some sermon CDs as long as they was free. <laughs> well, we sit on the CDs. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hebrews 9 and 22 says, Without shedding of blood, there is no remission. Remission means forgiveness. It means pardon. It means deliverance. Exactly. I can't explain all of it to you today. I don't know anyone who can. Right. You might think, oh yes, the Pope knows it all. No, I'm sorry. Matter of fact, he knows very little. Right. Amen. As far as the truth is concerned. Amen. You might think, oh, but Dr. So-and-so knows it all. He's, he's a scholar. He knows everything. No, he don't. There are some things about God you have to decide to accept on faith. Yeah. You can't explain them. True. You can't wrap your teeny carnal mind around them. Amen. You just have to decide God said it. That's what he does. Amen. Yeah, exactly. We know today that sin required death. Amen. We know that forgiveness required the shedding of blood. It's been this way all throughout the history of man. Come on. Without the shedding of blood, no remission. For sin. Amen? Amen. Now I want you to go with me to, what did I say? Exodus. We're going to go to Exodus. And I'll give you the Scripture in a minute because we're not going to be able to read this whole thing. A lot of things lead up to where we're going to start reading today. Right. We find that God's people, the children of Israel, they become enslaved and in bondage to the people of Egypt. Yeah. We find that one of the reasons this happened is because God's people were getting so many and so plenty as there were so many of them. Yeah. That the Egyptians were afraid that they'll become more powerful than we are, so we better do something about it. So they decide they're going to kill every man child that's born. Yeah. There's a decree that's given. There's an order that's given. When you stand by the side of an Israelite woman and she gives birth, if it's a if it's a girl, if it's a female, save that child. If it's a male, kill him. Mm. Amen. Take him and cast him into the river. Kill him. Right. So there's a little baby born by the name of Moses. Yeah. And his mother's an Israelite. Come on. Instead of him being destroyed and taken and thrown into the river, yeah. his mother makes it to where he's put in a little basket and put in the river and sent downstream toward Pharaoh's castle. Amen. Pharaoh's daughter finds the baby. And she takes the baby in. Yeah. And Moses is raised in the house of Pharaoh. Yeah. Just as if he was his own grandson. Just as if he was his own son. The Bible says he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Amen? Mm -hmm. But rather chose to endure the affliction of being the deliverer of Egypt. Yeah. As time went on, as Moses grew, and 
He's out one day and he sees one of the Egyptian soldiers beating one of the Israelites. And he rises up to stop it and he kills the Egyptian. And then he has to flee for his life. The next time that we find him, we find him on the back side of the desert yeah. keeping the sheep. Oh, wow. Amen. Amen? And God speaks to him out of a burning bush. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, they tried to explain how the bush caught on fire and they said, well, that was, no, that was no big deal. It wasn't a big deal. In the desert, it was so hot that things just combust. Yeah. It would just burn. Right. The big deal was that Moses looked upon the bush and why did he do it? Because this bush was on fire, but this bush was not being consumed. It wasn't burning up. There was something different about this fire. See, there's something different about God's fire. Amen? And God speaks to him out of the burning bush and says, Go tell Pharaoh to set my people free, to let them go. Go tell Pharaoh to let my people go. And after a little bit of conversing back and forth, you know, Moses didn't want to go. He stuttered and all that. God says, all right, I'll send Aaron with you. He's a good speaker. They go to Egypt. They stand before Pharaoh. Yeah. And Moses says, the Lord says, let my people go. Pharaoh says, well, who is he? He says, I am that I am. Right. Is who sent me. Let them go. Amen. And of course, we know that Pharaoh did not let them go at right. first. Amen. Come on. We find that God sends plague after plague. In Exodus the 7th chapter, the 14th to the 25th verse, the Bible teaches us that the water would turn to blood and would kill the fish and the other life that were in the water. Yeah. We find then that he it doesn't that doesn't work. But you'll find in each one of these times that Pharaoh says, Well, okay, maybe I'll let you go. And he oh. says, No, I'm not. Amen. You ever had somebody tease you like that? Well, you can have it. No, you can't have it. You can go. No, you can't go. Even there were times he said, I'll let you go, but it's going to be limited freedom. You go out and you sacrifice and you worship only like a three days journey or something. I forgot how he put it. But you just go out a little piece, Brother Sleeze. See, that's the kind of freedom some people have. They're still tied to Egypt. Right. They, they didn't go completely away. They're not completely free. They're just living right out on the outskirts of it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. But we talk about freedom today. Right. So anyway, one plague right after another, as we've learned before, all of these were a slap in the face of the false and ridiculous gods that Egypt had set up. The next thing they would send would be frogs. That would be Exodus 8. Exodus 8 and 1 and Exodus 8 and 15. And then we've got the last that he sends in Exodus 8, 16 through 19. Then we've got the flies that he would send. That's Exodus 8, 20 through 30. Then we've got the, the, the disease that would infect the livestock. That's chapter 9. Oh. You read a little bit farther in chapter 9 and you find the bulls that are sent. Yeah. Then you find the hail that is sent. Then you find the locust that is sent. Right. Then you find the darkness. Oh, my, 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 my. You find the darkness right. that was sent. You find it strange today. I don't find it strange. I find it revealing mm. that there would be darkness and then there would be this next final authoritative step. The Bible teaches us that whenever Jesus hung on the cross, there was darkness that covered the earth. Right. The ninth plague would be darkness. Amen. The tenth one would be the straw that breaks the camel's back. Mm. God had shown His power he had slapped the face of all of the false, ridiculous gods of Egypt, but now God would bring His people out. Go with me to Exodus, the 11th chapter, and the first verse. Exodus 11 and 1. The Bible says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Yet will I bring one plague more upon Pharaoh and upon Egypt. Afterwards He will let you go hence. When He shall let you go, he shall surely thrust you out hence altogether. Now, did you hear what he said? God says, Moses, there's one more plague. This one's it. I've shown my power. I've shown how I can, how I'm more powerful than the other gods that they've set up, the false gods that they've set up. <coughs> this one last plague, this one last move, this will be it. Right. 
He would tell them to be ready. Amen. Have your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, your staff in your hand. Because yes. this is it. Amen. It's going to happen now. Pharaoh will let you go. Oh, my goodness, I feel the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. Oh, Pharaoh Praise will God. let you. Not only will he let you go, Brother Sleece, but he'll thrust you out. He'll say, you go. Go. Amen. 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 There'll be no more. Well, you can go. No, you can't go. You can go a little bit, but you got to come back. Mm -hmm. You can take this, but you can't take everything. No, you go. Get out of here. Mm -hmm. This would be it. Oh, and this would be one of the most powerful pictures of what took place on Calvary. My, my, my. Amen. This would be the deliverance of God's people. There would be no more plagues after this one. Yeah. This would be the final step, the authoritative deliverance from bondage. Right. The fourth verse, still in the 11th chapter, the fourth verse says, And Moses said, Thus saith the Lord, About midnight will I go out into the midst of Egypt, and all the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die, from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sitteth upon his throne, yeah. even unto the firstborn of the maidservants that is behind the meal, and all the firstborn of the beasts. Now, I want you to listen to this. I want you to take time. I know it's getting late. It's Sunday afternoon. You may have something else to do. But I want us to take a moment to think about what he said here. He says, from the house of Pharaoh, amen, from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sitteth upon his throne, even unto the firstborn of the maidservant that is behind the meal. From the throne of Pharaoh, all the way down to the lowly maiden that serves behind the meal. Yeah. This will visit their house. Mm -hmm. All right. You listening to me today? Yes, sir. I hope you're listening to me out there by radio. Amen. This will. It don't matter about your fame. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter about your fortune. Right. It doesn't matter how much money you got Come on. or how much money you don't got. Come on. This will affect you. Right. Every one of us the Bible says it's appointed unto man wants to die after this, the judgment. Judgment's coming to the dark streets of Egypt. I got news for you. Judgment's coming to America. Judgment's coming to the world. Judgment's coming to every nation on the globe of the face of this earth. Amen. And everyone will be affected. It doesn't matter if you've got millions. It doesn't matter if you're a king. It doesn't matter if you're a prince. It doesn't matter if you're a why no old skin roll. Preach it, brother Billy. This judgment will affect you. That's it, brother. He says, from the, from the throne of Pharaoh Absolutely. all the way down to the maidservant, judgment's coming. Ju oh, you may think you're too big yeah. to be brought down. Oh, yeah. no, 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 no. Uh, the ground is level at the judgment uh, throne of God. It won't matter how much money you've had in this world. It won't matter how rich and famous you were. It won't matter how much you denied him or how much you, how much you thought you were right. Come on. This judgment is coming to your house. Absolutely. And that's what he tells them. Guaranteed. This judgment's coming. This death will be visited upon them all. It doesn't matter how rich. It doesn't matter how poor. It doesn't matter how much power you've got or whether you're a slave. This is coming. Come on, Amen. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, Brother Rodney. Oh, okay. It doesn't matter how popular you are. It doesn't matter if the Holly World, Hollywood has you on a pedestal and you're the idol of millions. Exactly. The ground is level at the judgment seat of God. Oh, brother. And there's only one that's just like there would be here this dark night when the uh -huh. angel of death, when God Himself would come through the streets and the back roads of Egypt and would smite the firstborn. Yeah. It's coming. Come on, tell it. And there will be only one escape. Yes, sir. We'll find out what their escape was here. And oh, what a picture. Amen. Right. What a picture of the blood Amen. of Jesus Christ. Go on to the sixth verse. Still in the eleventh chapter. And there shall be a great a great cry throughout all of the land of Egypt. Right. Such as there such as there was none like it nor shall be like it anymore. Now, he didn't mean that there'd never be a cry like this again anywhere. He meant in Egypt this would be, there'd never been a cry like this in Egypt. Mm. There'd never be another cry like this in Egypt. Yeah. Oh, I can think of a place where there's going to be a cry like this one. Come on. Oh, in the depths of the devil's hell, yeah. 
souls crying out for mercy when it's too late for mercy. Amen. Crying out for salvation when it's too late for yeah. salvation. Yeah. Oh, it would be too late the next morning for these people, their firstborn would have been taken. It would be too late the next morning, amen, whenever they find their loved one dead. It would be too late the next morning when they find that judgment visited their house. It would be too late. Amen. Listen to this. Oh, don't let me lose you this morning. This will be a great cry throughout all of the land of Egypt. Verse 7 says, but against, I'm going to take my glasses off. <clears throat> Verse 7 says, But against all, any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue against man or beast, that ye may know how that the Lord doth put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. Now we're getting ready to see what the difference was. What was the difference whenever God came through Egypt that night when judgment visited those households? What was the difference? What caused judgment to pass over their house? And this is important. Say, what in the world does that that happened thousands of years ago have to do with me? Everything. It has everything to do with you. Go with me to the 12th chapter, beginning of the first verse. The Bible says, The Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, this month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year. It's going to be a new beginning, God's telling them. Something different this time than it's ever been before. Amen. Oh, my, 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 my. Drop down to verse, uh, well, go with me to verse 3. Keep on reading there. Speak unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take thee, every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers. Yeah. A lamb for an house. Mm. Verse 5 says, Your lamb shall be without blemish. Yeah. It will be a male of the first year. You shall take it from the sheep or from... You shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. Just as the Lamb of God would be spotless. Yeah. Just as He would be a male. Just as He would be without blemish. Talking about Jesus. Right. Just as he would be taken out from among man, mm -hmm. God would put on. It, was, it wasn't enough for some angelic being to do this. Right. God became flesh, right. as much man as you are man, and would walk amongst men. Right. And out of the sea of men, out of men, this man would stand higher, would oh. walk taller, would come out from among them, and, and be the re the, the redeemer and the deliverer Amen. of God's people. My God. He would say, "Take a lamb." Without spot. A male of the first year take it from, from the sheep or from the goats. Yeah. Not just any lamb, but the lamb had to be spotless. Had to be a male. Amen. Amen. Verse 6 says, And you shall keep it for 14 days right. to the 14th day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it mm -hmm. in the evening. Now don't let me lose you here. Don't go sleep on me. The Bible doesn't give the specific time there, but in the Hebrew language and teachings, if you look that up in the evening, yeah. now listen to me. It says the whole assemble, assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. Every scholar that I read in studying this to a T says that it's a little complicated to figure out the time because of the Hebrew calendar, the timing, and all of that. But careful study of this concludes that the sacrifice of this lamb would have been somewhere around what they called the ninth hour, which would be 3 p.m. in the afternoon. You say, why does this matter? I'm glad you asked me. Matthew 27 and 46. You can stay there in Exodus because we're going back there. But Matthew 27 and 46. Now remember what we're talking about. We're talking about the time of day that God told Israel when they're in Egypt Take a lamb, a spotless lamb without blemish. Make it a male. Get it from the sheep or the goats. And at this time, I want you to sacrifice it. I want you to kill this lamb. Yeah. The ninth hour, three o'clock in the afternoon, we find Jesus on a hill just outside of Jerusalem in Matthew, the 27th chapter, the 46th verse. The Bible says, and about the ninth hour, did you hear what I said, church? About the ninth hour, 
power. Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, let us This is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And we find that they say that 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 uh, straightway one of them ran the Bible says in verse 48 and they filled a, a sponge with vinegar and they put it on a reed and they gave it to him to drink yeah. and the rest said let it, let it let it be let us see what uh, whether Elias will come and save him or not and she, the Bible says Jesus when he had cried again with a loud voice yielded up the ghost and behold the veil of the temple was rent in twain from top to bottom and the earth did quake and the rocks were rent Oh, hallelujah. God tells Israel over there in the land of Egypt at a time when they would been, they've been under the affliction and the bondage of the Egyptian people. He said, you take a lamb. Make sure it's a male without spot, without blemish. At three o'clock, the ninth hour, I want you to sacrifice it. We find Jesus hanging on the cross of Calvary. The ninth hour is the time that He said, it is finished. And He gave up the ghost to the temple. And the temple veil was rent in twain from top to bottom. And we were given access to the throne room of God. Oh, you talking about coincidence. You're going to have to stretch your imagination to wrap it around that one. To realize that here in the land of Egypt thousands of years before... God says you take this lamb and you kill him at 3 o'clock and then we find Jesus on the cross of Calvary hanging there on Golgotha suspended between heaven and earth giving up the ghost at 3 o'clock. Amen. God's showing us over here in the Old Testament about the blood of Jesus. Amen. Oh, my, my, my. Go back to Exodus with me. Still in the 12th chapter. It says, And you shall take the blood, 7th verse, and strike it on the two side posts and the upper door post of the houses wherein they shall eat it. Oh, drop down to verse 11. And thus shall you eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. Yeah. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt. I will execute my judgment. I am the Lord. Amen. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. Amen. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. What made the difference between the Egyptians and the Israelites? Honey, I got news for you. We learned about these Israelites as they get out into the wilderness that they were not perfect people. Amen. We see when they're out in the wilderness, they bellyache and they complain and they are far from perfect. I'm sure you could stood back before this event took place and you might have seen Joe over here, the Israelite, and you might have seen Ben over here, the Egyptian, and you might have thought Ben's a better man. Ben does better things. He don't complain near as much. He helps his neighbor more than Joe does. He's a better person. Yeah, but that didn't save Ben. The night judgment came through. It was the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood that saved the Israelites when judgment came by. He said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you because when he said I see the blood I know that death's already been made for that household I know the blood has already been shed for that household when he looks at us on judgment day and he's handing out judgment and he sees the blood of the lamb he'll know that death has already been made the sacrifice has already been made the blood has already been shed and he will pass judgment over you because he sees not your good works not that you're a good person not that you did good great deeds and mighty things, but the blood has been applied Amen. to your life. Yes, praise God. There were a lot of good Egyptians. Right. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. All of them were bad people. Come on. But that didn't save them. That's it. He didn't go through there saying, oh, that house, that's got a good guy in it. I'll leave it alone. That house, that's got a good guy in it. That guy over there, he's a booger, so I'm going to kill his. I'm going I'm to judge his household. No. It was the blood of the Lamb. Amen. It was the blood of the Lamb that made the difference. It's the blood of the Lamb that makes a difference today. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, when He sees me, He sees the blood of the Lamb. Come on. He sees me as worthy and not as I am. He sees me in garments 
as white as the snow. For the Lamb of God is worthy. And He's washed me this I know. Oh, when John looked over there in the book of Revelation, he said, who are these people? Yeah. He didn't, his answer was not, oh, these are good people. These are the ones that did great works and good deeds. No, it's these are they which came out of great tribulation and have their robes washed in the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Oh, it's the blood that makes the difference. Right. He says, when I pass through, when I see the blood on the limb, whenever I see it on the side post, yeah. I will pass over and will not suffer the destroyer to come into your houses to smite you. Mom. I don't stand here before you today confident that I'm going to make heaven my home because I think I'm so good. Yeah. I like to think I'm not as bad as some people might be. <laughs> but that only goes so far. All right. That doesn't carry any weight for God. Really? Come on. I'd like to think today that, you know, maybe my merit counts for something. Right. Not when you stand before a holy God, it don't. Your righteousness, He's already told us what that's made out of. Filthy rags. It takes the blood. It takes the blood. <clears throat> Plus nothing, Brother Slee said. Oh, my, my, my. And it came to pass. Verse 29. I'm closing. And it came to pass that at midnight the Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. From the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat upon his throne to the firstborn of the captive that was in the dungeon. Oh, did you hear that? Did you hear that? I realize in our big fancy homes and our fancy clothes and our fancy car, we like to look down our nose at those in the gutter and those that don't have as much and those that maybe are drug addicted and those that are hooked on alcohol. But i got news for you. Without the blood of Jesus, you will share the same hell they do if they don't accept Jesus. Amen. Amen. You will share the same hell as Adolf Hitler. Yes. If you don't accept... Oh, wait a minute, Brother Billy. Adolf Hitler was... He was one of the, the, the worst men in the history of the world. Yeah. Damnable things that he did. Right. And as terrible as those things were, and they were terrible, Amen. his greatest sin was rejecting Jesus. That's it. And that same sin will cause you to serve eternity in hell with Him if you reject God's only way. The blood. Amen. Only way. You got it. As God passed through Egypt that night, uh -huh. and He looked upon the different houses and the different homes, the thing that made the difference was, oh, there's the blood. Yeah. Yeah. Pass over. That's right. There's the blood. Judgment will not visit that house. There's the blood. Ooh. Oh, I wish we could get that this morning. I wish we could. I know, Brother Dave, that somebody else can preach this better. I've told God that before. God, there are people that can preach better than I can. They can use words better than I can. They're more educated than I can. Than I am. They told you. Oh, but I hope I can at least make it simple enough for you to understand today that if you don't accept Jesus, you will die and go to a devil's hell. Right. God has made one way, not a bunch of ways. Amen. One way. And that way is the blood of the Lamb that was shed on the cross of Calvary. Yeah. And when you put your faith in that, you see, as they sat inside their homes, knowing judgment was coming, yeah. Come on. their faith was in the fact that we obeyed God's Word. That's right. We put the blood of the Lamb on the doorpost. That's it. Now God's going to honor that. Yeah. That's where our faith's at today. Yeah. Oh, when I stand before God, it ain't nothing because I was a pastor and I was yeah. a preacher and I could sing good. It's because I obeyed the Word. Oh. The blood's been applied and God will... Oh, yeah. my Lord and my God. Yeah. And God will honor that. God will honor that. Hallelujah. My, my, my. The blood of the Lamb. And of course you know and I know there was a great cry. Pharaoh finds his firstborn dead. As everyone wakes up and the lights come on and they find their first, they all begin to holler and scream and mourn. Can you imagine what it would be like to wake up and there your firstborn is dead? Amen. Oh, hallelujah. The Pharaoh calls Moses and said, go get, get out of here. Take your people, take your stuff and get out. Get out of here. 
and they come up out of out of Egypt, out of the heavy hand of Pharaoh. Why? The frogs didn't do it. The lice didn't do it. Yeah. The boils didn't do it. The water turned into blood didn't do it. The blood of the Lamb that was applied to the households when judgment passed through, that's what did it. Oh, it's going to be the blood of the Lamb. Oh, my, my. It'll be His way or no way. Amen. You either go God's way or you'll go the way of the devil. Amen. There ain't no two or three choices today. Heaven or hell. You choose. Amen. Put your faith in God and the blood that Jesus shed on the cross of Calvary. Pharaoh calls Moses and Aaron by night. Middle of the night. He didn't even wait till the morning. Remember God told him, have your staff in hand, your shoes on your feet. Yeah. He said, rise up and get. Mm -hmm. Get you forth from among my people, both ye and the children of Israel. Go and serve the Lord mm -hmm. as ye have said. Mm -hmm. Get out of here. Go. I've had enough. I've had enough. Mm -hmm. It was the blood of the Lamb yeah. that broke the straw there that broke the camels the straw that broke the camels back oh how do you think the enemy felt as jesus gave up the ghost oh powerless that wasn't his greatest victory the devil's greatest victory would have been stopping jesus from getting to the cross once he made it to the cross and said it is finished guess what it was finished amen the work was accomplished. Amen. Those, all that we're looking at in the Old Testament. Oh, John the Baptist would call him the Lamb of God. In John one twenty nine, John thirty five and thirty, John one thirty five and thirty six, Peter would say in the first chapter of the first book of Peter, he would say, "For as much as you know that you were not redeemed in, uh, with corruptible things as silver and gold." and with the conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, mm -hmm. who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was made manifest in these last times for you. Amen. John calls him the lamb. Peter calls him the lamb. The book of Revelation refers to him as the lamb 29 times. Mm -hmm. You will come by way of the blood, or you will not come at all. If you try to get in any other way, you're the same as a thief and a robber, and you'll be cast out. What happened to the man that got into the marriage supper that didn't have on the wedding garment? He was cast into outer darkness with the weeping and gnashing of teeth. Why? Because he didn't have on the garment. The only garment today that makes you righteous before God is the blood-washed garment. Amen. And He showed us over. And we've seen it with Adam and Eve. We've seen it with Cain and Abel. We've seen it with Noah. And we've seen it here in Egypt. Amen. 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 There'll be one more thing unless the Lord changes my mind. There'll be one more picture and type that we'll look at. Because it's filled. The Old, the whole, the old Testament is full of it. We can't cover it all. Right. But there's one more. Lord willing, next week we'll look at the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. Because once they got out of Egypt, God wasn't done showing them mm. the blood, the need for the blood, the sacrifice. Amen. Man. And he would tell them right out there in the wilderness to build a tabernacle. Yep. Want to take a tape with them. Amen. Because they'd pick up the tents and take it on farther down the road. Amen. But he would tell them all the way down to the design of it. Mm -hmm. And you see this pass over here? God told them to observe this for all for, forevermore. This Passover. They still observe this Passover. Amen. God tells them it's not because the Passover today has the same significance or maybe, I don't know how to put it, that, is that it has the power to redeem. But, but the same reason he told the Pharisees, search the Scriptures, for it is the Scriptures that testify of me. He would tell them, keep the Passover because this picture is showing you the perfect lamb that will come and the blood that would be shed for many. The blood. These are the Scriptures. The Scriptures that testify of Him that show us over and over again that He would come. And now we can stand on this side of the cross and look back and say, yeah, God did exactly what He showed Him He would do. My, my, my. Only through the blood. Thank You, Lord. Someone else have something this morning before we go?